I said at the end of my video on pricing graphs that I would show you how to solve the last part using algebra. So now I'm going to do that. Now if you haven't watched that video, you need to to understand what's going on here. There's a link to that video in the video description right underneath. We're looking at two business card printing companies here and we need to work out how many cards cost the same whichever company you choose. Now let's look back at our graph to see what we've done. So we've actually already answered this by drawing a line and we found that the answer is 200. How else might we find that answer? And I said that we'd use some algebra to work it out. So Megaprint was the first company that we were looking at and we could see that Megaprint, let's make this nice and big, had a pricing structure that worked like this. So the price was equal to a four pounds fixed cost that you were charged however many cards you ordered. And then you were also charged three pence for every single card. So you were charged three pence, otherwise known as 0.03 pounds. And remember we've got four pounds here, so we need to keep everything in pounds. Why is it 0.03? Well, 0.3 pounds would be 30 pence. 0.03 pounds is three pence. It's three hundredths of a pound. So three pence, for each card. In other words, three pence times the number of cards. 0 0.03 times C, the number of cards. You don't need to write times in algebra, it's just 0 0.03 C. Now let's have a look at maxi card. So maxi card, the price that you pay, is a base cost of six pounds. We've been told this, and we've been told that the cost is six pounds for an order. That's the fixed cost plus something else, so six pounds plus a certain amount per card. But we don't know that yet, so we need to work it out. So what is the charge per card when we order from MaxiCard? How can we work this out? Well, we can see from the information that we're given that if you buy 500 cards, you pay 16 pounds. And we know that the fixed cost part of this is six pounds. In other words, you're charged an extra 10 pounds when you order 500 cards. So what's the extra cost for one card? So we got 10 pounds, let's do this in pence, divided by 500, cancel the zeros. So we've got 10 divided by five equals two P. Okay, so you're charging an extra two pence per card that you order. So it's six pounds fixed cost plus 0.02 pounds, that's two pence, times the number of cards that you order. Now, here's the crucial thing for you to understand. We're looking for the point where, if we go back to our graph to have a look, where the prices are the same, this magic point here. We've already found it using the graphs, but now we're checking it with the algebra to get the exact value, make sure we're absolutely right. It's not 201 cards, it's not 195 cards, it really is 200 cards. So, we're looking for the point where the prices are the same, okay? The point where, P equals P. The two P's are identical. So if the P's are identical, if they have the same value, then these things must also have the same value. This must be the same as this. And we can, oh, destroying my working there. So we can write this out using an as is the same as sign. What is is the same as in maths? Of course, it's equals. So four plus 0.03c is the same as 6 plus 0.02c. And remember, c is the number of cards, so if we solve this now, we can know what the number of cards is, what c is. And we know that we can solve this because it only has one thing in it that we don't know, which is c. We've got that c in two places, we have to do something about that, we have to have c in just one place, but we'll get there. It's just a little bit fiddly with these decimals. Now, if you don't know how to solve one of these, this video isn't the place to start. I've got other videos on algebra which go through the basics a bit more carefully in my channel. So go and have a look at the core maths playlist and see what algebra resources you can find there to help you understand it. If you understand that stuff, keep watching. So, 
we've got 0.03 Cs on this side and 0.02 Cs on the other side. We want all our Cs in one place, so in the end we're just going to have a nice C equals something or other as our solution. We can't do that till they're together, so we want to have all the Cs on one side. We can either take away 0.03 C from both sides or take away 0.02 C from both sides because you get rid of something by taking it away if it's been added on. We want to stay with the positive value, we don't want minus something C, so let's take away 0.02 2c because we can take that away from 0.03 and c and still have something left. Whoa, I hope that made sense. Well it should as you carry on watching. So we're going to take away 0.02c from both sides. Okay. So on this side we're still going to have 4 because we haven't done anything to the numbers without c's. We've got 4 plus 0.03c take away 0.02c. What's 3 take away 2? It's 1 plus 0.01c equals 6 and We've got rid of this because we've taken it away, so there's nothing left there, equals 6. But now we've got numbers on both sides, and it would be much easier if they were all on one side, if we had a number of Cs equals a number of numbers. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, how do we get rid of this 4 here? How do you get rid of a plus 4? You take away 4. You always do the opposite when you're solving equations. To get rid of something, you do the opposite. If something is timesed by something and you want to get rid of that, you divide by it. If something's divided by something and you want to get rid of that, you times by it. If something's added and you want to get rid of it, you minus it. That's what we're doing here. So minus 4, everything you do, you always do to both sides. So take away 4 from this side, that's going to disappear. So we're just left with plus 0.01c, which is just 0.01c equals 6 minus 4, which is 2, so 0.01c equals 2. c equals, this is what we really want to find out, this is going to be our answer. So we've got 0.01 times, that's a times in between there in that gap, a little time symbol, but we don't write time symbols when we're doing this, we just have 0.01c, it means 0.01 times c. We want to get rid of something, we do the opposite, as I just explained. So if we want to undo timesing by 0.0.1, 0.01, we have to divide by it. So divided by 0.01, do that to both sides. So 0.01c divided by 0.01 is just c, that's the whole point. 2 divided by 0.01. How do we sort this out? Well, 2 divided by 0.01 is, to get rid of a decimal, we need to start timesing by multiples of 10. So it's going to be 20 divided by 0.1. We've still got a point, we need to times it by 10 again, equals 200 divided by 1. What's 200 divided into one piece? Well, it's just 200. If you divide something into one piece, it stays the same. So the answer is 200. 200 cards. Now, I hope that's really clear if you understand algebra a bit. If you don't, go back to my channel and have a look at some other videos on algebra. And an example of a really useful video on algebra in my channel is this video. So I suggest you just pop over there and watch that and really make your skills secure.